because I'm I'm starting to see things more naturalistically as okay, well, winter is a great metaphor for a restful period and you bring an evergreen tree into your home to, to remember and not get despondent if you're under three feet of snow. Hey guys, everything's going to turn green again. I, I think that it's potent for um, your cultural heritage and rich traditions need to maintain themselves. Um, it can't just get homogenized where everything becomes some corporate holiday be, and you get um, the, the bank and the post office and these places are closed because the, the, the government gave it to you. That's not it. We, we can reflect on the solstice. We can reflect on the times of harvest. And that, that varies based on your region and even based on microclimates in your region. So you may be someone that lives in a mountain and they'll be harvesting in the valley, but your harvest has to come a month sooner because the weather is going to turn sooner for you than it would for the people living in a valley. And so you would, you would start to develop a different culture, even though you may, even though you may live uh, 20 miles or an hour's drive away from the people that live in a valley. And so we do pay homage to these traditions. And my, my family celebrates Christmas. My in-laws celebrate Christmas. But we don't want to start off lying to our children about Santa Claus. I would rather tell them that this is a great time of year that whenever everything's dying and everything is receding back and resting, that we show that this realm is abundant by giving instead of also trying to hoard and sit on wealth that during the time of plenty, we made the most of it so that we, we, this hoard that we built up, our, our canned goods, our uh, creations, whatever it is, we can give them out. Uh, like we're, we don't see it as, oh, we only have X amount to make it through the winter and back into next summer. No, no, no. We have plenty. There is plenty here. And, but we have to do the good work to ensure that that is, uh, to ensure that that is so. And so we do celebrate, but there, there seems to be a difference in it because I see just in the behavior that my, that some, some folks in my family were exhibiting that because we're kind of like pulling our children and like, Hey, this is, this isn't the way that we're going to celebrate. And we're, we're letting them bringing them up in our new tradition, which is an old tradition to, to pay homage to nature. And this, and we're all, we're pointing like, Hey, it's not about a tree. It's about what created the tree. How did we all get here? We're not staying stuck on the creation, but we're marveling in the fact that it could exist at all because I'm not making an acorn anytime soon. I'm not making a tree, but I can observe it and I can witness it and I can, uh, and I can sit in the awe and the majesty of that and look at both of my boys and be like, guys, this is, this is magic. This is true. There's nothing that you, you can't make an acorn be another tree and you can't even make an acorn. Um, and so after seeing how some folks in our family were just defaulting back to the commercialized um, uh, holiday season, I, I, I just, I can't support or say that I celebrate or endorse any of it. What I would rather say is that we are forging these new traditions with the, it's like we looked around that, uh, we, we looked around an old dilapidated house and we saw brass uh, candlesticks. And so we grabbed those and we made some new candles to stick in them. We dusted the candlesticks off and we stuck a new candle on them. And we said, Hey, thank you, God, for this, uh, for this candlestick. Thank you for the brass. Thank you for the air. Thank you for the candle. And it, it's just that simple.